we talk about what is language, then we distinguish between the human language and the communication system of the animals. We know that animals also communicate with each other. You must have seen the crows making the sound of cow cow, dogs bark to communicate to each other something. Uh, there are dolphins which can also communicate, elephants communicate with each other, various animals, birds uh, can also sing and communicate to each other. But then what is it that makes us so unique that we say that humans have a language but animals do not have a language. Uh, before we talk about the features of the human language, let us talk about what uh, the general basic things about language. So, it is a generally agreed thing that language is a system of communication that uses symbols shared by a culture or community to convey meaning. And we have uh, two types of languages, uh, oral language and written language. Oral language is primary, that means we first learn how to speak and then only we learn how to write a language. As you can see here that uh, oral languages use oral uh, spoken symbols like uh, the sounds, consonants, vowels which are produced by human organs and second is written language which uses the graphemes, the letters of the alphabet and so on. You can see some examples here, the sounds ka, pa, la, ra, na, they are represented in Devanagari as ka, pa, la, ra, na, you can see it written there. Tamil again, we have the same uh, sounds represented by graphemes. Then we have Urdu symbols, Urdu letters for the same uh, uh, system of uh, sounds. There is a linguist called uh, Noam Chomsky and uh, he was the one who specified that we the humans have a language acquisition device in the brain. So that means every human being is equipped by equipped with a system called language acquisition device. That means every human being has inborn capacity to learn language, not a particular language. And he also said that there are uh, there is a system in the lad which is called universal grammar. That means we have a system of principles, conditions, and rules that are elements or properties of all human languages. So that means all human beings share part of their knowledge of language no matter which language they speak. So universal grammar is their common inheritance, we get it inborn. This is innate, by birth we are equipped with this uh, uh, grammar in the language acquisition device. Acquiring language means learning how these principles apply to a particular language and which value is appropriate for each parameter. So principles are a set of universal features shared by every language which are known by all human beings and parameters are they are finite in number and they define how the universal features need to be applied to construct grammatical sentences in particular languages. So principles we, that make the uh, principles make us uh, one that all human beings have certain principles of learning acquiring language but the parameters differ from language to language. So parameters make languages different. There are structural relationships between the components of a sentence, not only the linear relationships. That means words are not arranged linearly, they have some structure. For example, uh, we all know that in every language we have the concepts like subject, object, verb, direct object, indirect object, preposition, postposition and so on. But so principles are same that subject, object, verbs, they exist in our brain, the concepts, but we use different parameters, different values for these, the concepts. So subject will be uh, occurring first in uh, English, then comes verb, then comes object. So an English sentence will look like subject, verb, object, for example, she drank milk. In Hindi, the concepts are same, subject, object, verb but we arrange our values, the parameters differently. So we say usne dood piya, that means she drank milk, she or he. If it were Tamil language, then so Tamil, Bangla, Assamese, Manipuri, they all arrange their subject, verb, object in the same manner as Hindi. 
So subject comes first, then object and then the verb. For example, in Tamil, we will say the same sentence as Aval Pal Kudittar. So uh, if it was some other language like uh, Maithili, so O Dood Pilak, O is he or she, Dood is milk and Pilak is drank. The process of acquiring language is not based solely on learning but also dependent on an inborn knowledge of the fundamental grammar common to all languages. Children's brains are programmed to learn language. We have a blueprint in our brain to learn a language. The language faculty is located within a person's brain and converts experience and inborn knowledge into knowledge of language. Essentially, all humans acquire language and no other animals do. Language is a purely human and non-instinctive method of communicating ideas, emotions and desires by means of a system of voluntarily produced symbols. These symbols are in the first instance auditory and they are produced by the so-called organs of speech. They are actually no organs of speech, there are no organs of speech. We know that teeth are made for chewing something, lungs are made to breathe, the larynx uh, is there, uh, it contains uh, glottis, epiglottis. So they are various organs for the, say ingesting food, food goes through that or even uh, wind, air passes through that. The palate is meant for something else, nose is made to breathe again, tongue is made to taste and so on. So there are no proper organs of speech. The, uh, the organs of speech, the so-called organs of speech, secondary function of producing speech. Speech is not a simple activity that we have through biology. Actually oral language development is ultimately connected with cognition. So it is not that language is only meant for communication, it has some other functions also. Language gives for example, child an opportunity to think out loud, self-talk that is called uh, metacognition that they know what they are thinking, what they are going to talk about. Language also makes children capable of forming ideas, beliefs and gather in experiences, gather information and then they use that knowledge to expand uh, the knowledge that they have already uh, accumulated. Now let us talk about how the human language differs from that of the animals. So human communication is different from the animal communication. There are certain features uh, which describe what language actually is. So I have given some definition, uh, definitions. You can uh, look at these definitions here. I will read it slowly. Language is a symbol system based on pure or arbitrary conventions, infinitely extendable and modifiable according to the changing needs and conditions of the speakers. This definition was given by Robbins. According to this definition, language is a system of symbols. Every language selects some symbols to represent concepts, ideas, propositions, etc. For example, English uses the sequence of sounds b, u, k for book. Hindi uses k, e, t, a, b, kitab. So similarly, English uses for uh, plural formation s as in books, z as in dogs, as or is as in roses, but Hindi uses for plural different other sequence of sounds. For example, so you will have ladke boys, kitabe books, kitabo me kitabo plural o, ladkiya girls for the same and so on. The system talked of here is purely arbitrary in the sense that there is no one to one correspondence between the structure of a word and the thing it stands for. So uh, with this we mean that the combination for example in English we have pen, pa, a and na. So there is no logical, uh, there is no logic that why pen should be called pen. It could have been uh, called nap or apn, but this is just a convention that the writing instrument is called pen in English. Language conventions are not easily changed. 
yet it is not impossible to do so. Language is infinitely modifiable and extendable. Words go on changing meanings and new words continue to be added to language with the changing needs of the community using it. For example, uh, after the mobile has come, the computers have come in uh, human life, we have these things. So, for example, Hindi has added many words. So, now we have download karo, uh, upload karo, miss call do. So, see these words have come in uh, English and Hindi and many other languages. Language is a purely human and non-instinctive method of communicating ideas, emotions and desires by means of a system of voluntarily produced symbols. This definition was given by Sapir. Uh, so, as we know there are two terms in this definition human and non-instinctive. So, language is species specific that means this kind of language is only given to the human, only humans have the language and it is non-instinctive, it is not genetically transferred, it is not that a child is born and she will automatically start speaking the mother tongue the language that uh, she has around her family. She has to learn it or she has to acquire it. But in animals what happens? The newborn baby is there that of a say dog or cat or another bird. So, they will start imitating the sounds that their parents used. But humans do not do that. That way it is non-instinctive. A child has to learn language and she learns the language of the society she is placed in. If the child does not hear a language, then she will not learn a language. Human brain is competent enough to construct different sentences from out of the limited set of sounds beginning to, uh, belonging to a particular language. Human brain is so productive that a person can at any time produce a sentence that has never been said or heard earlier. Language is a system of conventional spoken or written symbols by means of which human beings as members of a social group and participants in its culture communicate. This definition is given by the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, let us see uh, what are the design, so called design features of human language. Number one is language is a means of communication. Language is a very important means of communication between humans. They can communicate their ideas, emotions, beliefs or feelings as they share a common code that makes up the language. There are other means of communication used by humans. For example, we use gestures like this, wings, flags, shorthand, braille alphabet, Morse code, miming, etc. But all these systems of communication are extremely limited or they too in turn depend upon language only. They are not so flexible, comprehensive, perfect and extensive as language is. Language is important for uh, the society. We can communicate only by using a language. It gives shape to people's thoughts and guides and controls their entire activity. Animals too have their system of communication, but their communication is limited to a very small number of messages like hunger, fear, anger, etc. Second quality is language is arbitrary. That means, there is no direct relationship or there is no logical connection between a particular symbol or a word and its meaning. The symbol or a word and the meaning are linked by convention. For example, in English we use the word cup which is used to drink something which has a handle, but there is no connection between the cup and the thing that it refers to. There is nothing in the shape of cup that will prompt us to make a combination of sounds ka, a uh, and per. So, that means it is convention. See, it is possible that humans could have used in English speakers the word trent or zwang or any other word for cup. We call black in English, we call white in English white, but it is possible that some 3000, 4000 years ago if they started uh, calling white as black or black as white, then today we would uh, mean uh, black could be white or white could be black. So, there is no logical connection. Take another example, we say tree in English. There is nothing in the sequence of sounds t, r, e or written language t, 
R double E that indicates that how the shape of the object that it denotes would look like. So, each particular language for example, Assamese, Bengali, Hindi, Tamil, Manipuri, Mizo, Nepali, German and other languages also they have a different set of symbols and they use it differently. For example, the word symbol for tree in Hindi is ped, but in Bengali, Sanskrit, Manipur, Manipuri, Tamil, Urdu and German it is gach, vriksh, u, maram, darakht and bomb. The third feature is total feedback that means human have an ability to perceive the linguistic signals they transmit that is they have understanding of what they are communicating to others. So, this allows them to continuously monitor their actions and output to ensure that they are relaying what they are trying to express. The fourth feature is spatialization that means language signal is emitted for the sole purpose of communication and it is not the side effect of any other behavior or biological function such as eating. So, we use language only for communication it is not a byproduct of some other biological action. You must have seen uh, when the dog a dog feels uh, hot then it starts cooling off its uh, uh, body by panting. So, it uh, makes the tongue uh, sticks the tongue out and then starts panting that means so biologically it is uh, feeling hot but it could also communicate that the dog is thirsty or the dog is feeling hot. So, this communication is byproduct of some biological action, but in human language it is not so. The next feature is semanticity. So, every human language, so we have uh, words and symbols we use to denote some objects and actions, but these associations are relatively fixed that means there is relatively fixed meaning to a human for example, a chair means a four legged piece of furniture we can sit on. Humans can generalize by applying this name to all types of chairs not just a particular one. An example is how a single object is represented by different language signals that is words in different languages. For example, in English the word salt represents a white crystalline substance consisting of sodium and chlorine. Yet in Hindi, French, Maithili, Tamil, the same substance is represented by the words namak, noon, cell, upu. The next feature is discreteness. Language can be said to be built up from discrete units that is phonemes in human language. Exchanging such discrete units causes a change in the meaning of a signal that is an abrupt change is there rather than a continuous change of meaning. For example, if you take a word in English cat and you replace the first sound k with b, so it means bat. This change is abrupt, the meaning change is abrupt at some point, it is not continuous. So, we mean by discreteness that human speech, human language can be segmented, we can break it up into smaller categories. The next feature is displacement. Language signals may be used to convey ideas about things not physically or temporally present at the time of the communication. So, for example, we can talk about an event which has happened in past or an event which is going to take place in the future. So, we can describe about a football match that happened yesterday or long time ago. We can talk about some plan that we are going to play a cricket match say next Sunday. So, this feature is only there in the language of the humans, animals do not have it or even if they have it, it is limited, very limited. Displacement also includes prevarication which is the ability to lie or produce utterances which do not correspond with reality. So, only human language makes us capable of lying or saying something which is not real. The next feature is productivity. This is also known as creativity. So, language is an open ended system, it is not closed system like the communication system of animals. So, like uh, some chimpanzees, gibbons, they can make 40, 50, 
types of sounds. Dogs can make 13 or 14 types of sounds. But in human language, it is open-ended. That means we can potentially produce an infinite number of different messages by combining the elements differently. That means uh, humans can use language to understand and produce an indefinite number of novel utterances. So that means we can create uh, sentences which we have not used before. We can understand sentences we have not heard before. This also entails reflexiveness. That means we can talk about language. So language which is used to talk about the language. For example, uh, we say that uh, the child is sleeping. Now we can, this is an example of language, a sentence. The child is sleeping, but we describe it in a language. So the is an article, child is a noun, is is a verb, auxiliary verb, sleeping is verb, etc. So we used these terms to describe language. The next feature is duality of patterning. So this is a characteristic of human language. The animals don't have it. It means we can analyze speech at two levels. The first level is meaningless elements. So the level of meaningless elements, for example, the sounds or phonemes, the consonants, vowels, semi-vowels, etc. And the second level is that of meaningful elements. For example, the words or morphemes. So there are two levels of pattern. One is that of a system of meaningless elements and the second one is that of meaningful elements. So we combine these meaningless elements to make meaningful elements like words and morphemes, sentences and so on. This duality of level is in fact one of the most economical features of human language because with a limited set of discrete sounds, we are capable of producing a very large number of sound combinations that is words which are distinct in meaning. For example, we can have elements like pa, ba, ta, ra, da, ka, ga, la, sa or vowels u, a, e. But these meaningless elements can be combined to create primary level word units. That is, for example, pit, cart, crucial, rule, brisk, slip, etc. The uh, next feature which is the last one is called traditional or cultural transmission. The details of the language that we learn are not transmitted genetically, even if the language faculty is genetically determined. Although humans are born with the innate ability to learn language, they learn a particular linguistic system as their native language from parents, elders, etc. in their community. In other words, language is socially transmitted from one generation to the next and a child brought up in isolation does not acquire language. So that means uh, although humans have the inborn capacity to learn language, as I mentioned, we have the language acquisition device, we have a universal grammar in our brain. So each child is capable of learning language, but if the child does not get chance to hear language from parents and others then the child will not learn a language. If you keep a child in uh, isolation, uh, she does not have contact with any human being, she will not learn any language. Similarly, you must have seen that if the father speaks Tamil for example and mother speaks Hindi, but they too converse in English, then if they have a child, so the child never hears Tamil or Hindi because her parents are talking English. So the child will learn English language, not Hindi and not Tamil because she has the universal grammar, she has the language acquisition device in her brain, so she has the rules and when she hears the system of English language from her parents, then that system is activated, those rules are activated and she acquires a language. If it were not so, she would not acquire a language. So today we learnt what are the features of human language how it differs from the language or the communication system of animals. So the main features were arbitrariness that means there is no logical connection between the sounds, the symbols and the object that it refers to except for certain words like thak thak, tan tan etc in many languages. 
we also learned that human language is non-instinctive. It is not genetically transferred like animals. So, we have to acquire a language. Then we also learned that there is a duality of patterning in human language. That means, we have two systems, we can separate uh, the system of language. So, there is a set of meaningless elements and we combine them to make meaningful elements like words and morphemes and so on. So, we talked about the main features of human language, we will talk about some other topics, something else about language, the functions etcetera in other lecture. This is all for today. Thank you.